I wanted to put this video together because I feel like we didn't really do the calculus stuff full, uh, it's full credit. Um, so I have this little PowerPoint here and I'll take some questions too at any point. Um, when, when, after you watch this, if you have any questions, but, uh, so this goes back to, um, the, it says right here, the things that you would need. So you can pause it right now. If you want to break these out or just make a little tab, I mean, dual threat worksheet we did in class. Um, and I barely went over it before we left. Um, and then two other good examples of, calculus being used in on AP exams. I mean, there's a little bit on every one, obviously, um, but these I thought were pretty good. I was going to go through these too. So if you want to just, it, it's again, it's in my MCPS. You can look up both these exams. You can print them out, follow along, whatever. I mean, I put the problem in here uh, in, in the presentation, so that should be pretty easy to go along. So this, just a quick review, you know, this was the, the, um, dual threat worksheet uh, and it went over kind of all the classic examples of calculus so I have a feeling that even though this year is going to be a little bit different they're probably going to have at least a little bit of calculus on this uh, on this year's exam <clears throat> so things like this again spring energy uh, this is not on the exam so there's no springs so one half kx squared although you should know it um, is not going to be on this year's exam, but basically the idea, you could still have this sort of problem where if they say calculate the work done and they give you force, if it's not a constant force, you do have to integrate. So you will need this formula, which is the work formula. Um, but this one just, this one just is a very straightforward one where if you, if this should jump out at you. If they ask for work and they give you a uh, force as a function of distance, right? So that's like saying something like a force is varying right instead of like oh we have this you know this guy's being pulled by a 10 newton force and there's you know uh whatever some friction on the way back but if i said oh it moves for two meters hopefully that you would say oh yeah the work equals just force times displacement and remember we could have an angle here like that so those were the more straightforward problems uh, but if they gave you how force varies, which means our force is increasing as you move along this surface here, um, then you have to do some integration. So I'm not going to go over the integration, but that one definitely is a formula that involves calculus. Uh, this one, of course, the classic, if, the, if you know any sort of like, oh, what's the displacement is equal to the integral of velocity, right? And then velocity is the integral of acceleration or derivatives. Um, and I gave you a little assignment just to practice that a little bit. So you should be able to do those sorts of things. Um, again, just to remind you, you notice that this jumps out at you right here. You're like, oh my gosh, E, like, you know, an E function. Uh, all the integrals are in your formula sheet. Um, so you don't have to really worry about that. You don't have that much time. So you should probably know that if you do this, like an, an integral of e is just e, but you got to put a one half in front because of that two that's in there. So that's a u substitution type of thing. Um, so, but I'm not going to go over that either. Uh, other things, impulse. If they give you force, uh, this one says like the remember I called it gym pulse would be if I pull an object, you know, for. 10 newtons for three seconds, my impulse would have been 10 times three. But the, the probably the most common thing you might remember was like, oh, um, force times that. The impulse, they don't really ask for that too much. They could ask for that. That is specifically just this right here, which is how long a force is applied for, which causes a change in momentum. This is called the momentum impulse theory that the mass times the change in velocity is equal to the force times the time that it's applied. So if your force varies, like so here I just told you 10, so you put 10, you put 3, but if they give you a varying force, oh, just like this up here, you know, calculate the work, calculate the gym pulse, those are kind of popular uh, calculus type problems. Um, 
these, uh, which are on the back of that worksheet, dual threat, a um, little bit, little bit different, right? So those are kind of the front was just sort of like some straightforward, like oh, these are integrals you should know, or these are problems where integrals will be involved. But uh, often they ask for to write and solve a differential equation. It sounds so scary, and you know, literally this right here, that is a differential equation, right? So. If I said solve this, just to kind of refresh your memory, you know, you could put like a dy equals x dx. You integrate both sides, you get y equals 1 half x squared plus c. Um, but a differential equation just means it has a derivative in it. So don't, again, don't be afraid of that. Um, it sounds super impressive. There are hard ones, yes, but um, any of the ones they're going to ask you pretty much always have to do with Newton's second law, right? So your F equals MA is what you should be thinking, right? So some of the forces in, the, in any direction equals MA. Uh, so if a block is sliding along a surface, okay, so here's a block. It's sliding. It's moving this way. There's some friction acting backwards, right? Some force of friction. So uh, you probably remember these, hopefully you remember these problems where it's like, oh, the only force is the negative force of friction. There's nothing pushing it forward. Um, so that's it. That was, and often they gave you the mu um, and they just said, calculate acceleration. Well, you we can make it a little more complicated uh, because you should remember this is equal to mu times the normal force. And this is all solved for you, but I kind of want to go through it just so you can kind of see, you know, I, I never really went, went over this too much. So mu, and I'm, I may not do the whole thing, but you get something like this, boom, boom. So this, this we did even without differential equations. Now, where does the differential equation come into play? That's the part I literally, I was a little remiss, we didn't get to do that. So that right there, there's a derivative, right? So anytime they say Newton's second law, that's they're just yelling, they're screaming at you, differential equation involving forces, that's what they're asking for. Now this is a super easy one because you, it says find the final linear velocity, but if you have acceleration, you should know that you can integrate this. Well, it's probably a little bit easier to, I'm just gonna write it like this, dv dt, equals mu, negative mu g. I just move stuff around there. So if you separate it, right? So if I separate this, dv equals mu g dt, integrate both sides like I was just talking about. You know, what does that give you? That gives you velocity equals negative mu g t plus a constant. Well, Mr. Gets, where'd that t come from? Oh, well, this this is dt, right? So think of this as like, uh, what if I said, oh, integrate uh, 2x. I'm sorry, just 2. Sorry, 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 sorry. If I said just integrate just 2, right, what would that, what would the integral of this 2 be? It would be 2x, right? Like the integral of a constant plus c. So this being a constant here, here's your variable. Instead of x, right, instead of dx, you have a constant. So this is a super, looks super complex, but you just put the constant times the variable. Oh, the constant times the variable. So it looks complicated, but basically there's nothing snazzy about this. Um, you're integrating um, and you're just you're keep you know move them move the leave the v on one side move the t to the other side and you end up getting an equation for velocity now of course they give you an initial condition at time zero the initial velocity so that's when you solve for c so any of these again they may ask it this year i think they might do a quick easy one like this um but if you know the initial velocity is boom at what time at t equals zero, you can plug this in, you end up getting v zero is your constant. So your final equation would be mu dt plus v zero. And you can rewrite this to make it look good, but it kind of makes sense. You have some initial velocity, 
and then over time the velocity goes down, right? So you start with some initial velocity, that's your plus c, and then as time progresses you lose velocity. All right, so number six, which is starts the same way, write and solve a differential equation, right? We get our boom, write and solve an equation. They don't tell you Newton's law, but they do give you the fact that a ball is shot out of a cannon and air resistance is considered. Okay, so it has some initial velocity zero. Guess what? The only force backwards is the force of friction or drag, but what's different about this? They tell you the force varies with velocity. So here is where the differential equation really comes into play. Do the same thing, we get this, we get ma, the only force here is this. So it's like friction, we never did air resistance, but this is basically, and oh, here's where the differential equation comes into play. Because what's screaming at you here in this problem is uh, the only force, right? The only force is this right here, so that's the only thing acting on this as the ball moves to the right here like this, but here's where that's what they really want with a differential equation, right? So it's like a, a y and a dy dx, and I think some of you remember like more complicated, like remember doing these, like dy dx equals um, x times y or something like that, right? And then you had to like put, you had to separate your variables, x dx, bum, bum, like all that jazz. And that's basically what you're going to have here. I see a V, I see a DV DT, which is just like this right here. It's like having a, a D, DY DX and a Y. So um, as soon as I see this, basically I'm going to try to get all the V's to one side. So uh, DV, I'm going to do this kind of quickly. So I'm going to move the V over here. I, I like putting the V's on this side equals, uh, and then a negative uh, k over m dt. I did that sort of fast, but basically I move the dt over there, move this over there, and you get this, okay? Now you have a differential equation because it's just like this up here, right? Um, so what does this become? This be as this is the classic, right? So what's the interval of one over velocity is natural log of V equals negative KM. What did we already say? That's just a constant. So it just gets a T, right? So right here, that's a constant. So just like what's the integral of two, two X, right? Now, of course, this doesn't really, we're trying to solve a differential equation. So uh, hopefully you remember your calculus where you have to do e to both sides right to get rid of a, at least that's how I do it what is e to the ln of something we kind of ignore the absolute value thing you probably learned in calc and we end up getting e to all this garbage right but you also should have learned in calculus that this right here that little constant that can be turned into a little constant in front right so it's just renaming the constant to make it look nicer. So we put a, um, a k here. You don't have to do this, but it usually makes it easy. Oh, well, let's not make it k, sorry. Let's make it. Um, I'll just put make it a big C, right? So just so we have it a big C. But they tell you it has initial velocity v0, so guess what? So I'm going to do this real quick, but... What is, when you put a zero in here, what is e to the zero is one, and then, and that's at, that is true, v equals v zero at that time. So basically what you end up with is your constant, and I can always, there you go, your constant ends up being v zero, is what it has, whoops, sorry. So. That's kind of a classic one. I would not be shocked if they put that on this year. And last last one is a little bit different because uh, people get super excited. I When I taught calculus, I remember this happening all the time. This time, the rocket is fired and the rocket, so we have a rocket here, 
it's a positive force, right? So it's a positive force, but it increases with velocity. Oh, okay, so right and solve a differential equation, we get this. So what's my only force? They ignore air resistance or frictionless surface, that's right. So frictionless surface equals ma, and you're gonna get the idea that this is dv dt. And we're gonna get something similar, right? We're gonna get dv over v squared equals, uh, we get our um, k, sorry. K over M D T in it. Whoa, integrate, integrate. Uh, no, people want to do ln here. That is not an ln. Like what's the integral of one over X squared is not ln. It's negative one over X, right? Just to remember that, right? That's, so this becomes, does not become an ln. It becomes negative one over V, right? Just like this equals k and t plus constant and then blah 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 you could finish the rest of it you can solve for v that's always a pain to do you put in your initial condition uh, they tell you it's initially moving one meter per second so you can put in uh, a one for the velocity right here right so we're putting in a, a one here at time zero 0 plus c, so our c equals negative 1. You can plug it back in here and solve for v if you need to. I don't think they'd ask to do that, but um, it's because you don't have that much time this year on the exam. All right, so um, onwards. So I picked out, so here's the actual answers if you want to check stuff, and, and you can kind of, I was going to possibly use this, but that's the, that's the answers you should be looking at. Um, so 2016, if you need to get this out, you can pause it, but you can kind of see, what, like, how would I know this is just, okay, a spring is nonlinear and exerts a force, right? Um, I forget what the question ask. They want to know the speed of the blocks. Yeah, so even though there's no springs this year, um, the idea is... Uh, this you can have a nonlinear force. They may not use. They won't use the word spring. Probably, they can have something else here. But what they're basically saying is you're not going to have to know one half k x squared, right? Because it's not on, on the test this year. But you could have this, right? A spring is nonlinear and exerts a force. And as soon as I see this, that is just yelling at me, right? That's yelling at me like I'm probably going to have to integrate this somehow. And that's what comes out to be here. Um, for this one, let me see one second. Yeah, so part B is derive an expression for the speed. That has to do with the collision, right? So blah, blah, blah. Expression for kinetic energy. Um, so basically this block comes in, hits this guy. I think part B and C, you actually have to, you calculate some stuff, right? So B and C are not what I'm talking about. That's like, you've got to do um, a collision so you got to do momentum initial equals momentum final. And then what's the expression for the kinetic energy? Well, you should know kinetic energy equals one half mv squared. So there's two masses. They're stuck together. You know the final velocity. You can get the final kinetic energy. So you know just before this hits, and it doesn't have to be a spring. It could just be like someone's just here. Push. Oh, boy. They're pushing, right, the blocks. But we know, what we say, what's, how are they pushing? They're pushing with a force of this much. But notice the force varies not, uh, force varies with distance, right? Whoops. So to find an expression for this part right here, find expression for the maximum distance. Well, how would, like, so the, you know, they always lead to each other, the AP problems. How would the distance have to do with kinetic energy. Well, immediately you should shout it out you like, oh, it has some kinetic energy and it's being stopped. At the end, it has zero. So it's gonna like lose some work. This is, remember I used to do this, I used to do energy initial equals energy final, that the kinetic energy, I see distance, they give me force, that is just screaming for you to use, you know, this, right? So distance being, instead of S, they're talking about how far will this thing 
little this thing go here. So you know it's 1 half mv squared equals the integral of f dot ds. Uh, what, did they, what did they say it was? It was um, negative bx cubed, right? So I'm not going to do the whole thing, but a negative bx cubed dx, right? That's We just changed it because they gave it as x instead of s. So what's the integral of this garbage? We already know previously, uh, from the previous part of the problem, we know what this is, right? We integrate this, we should get negative bx to the fourth. That should be over a four. Uh, and so derive an expression for the maximum distance. So you have to solve for x, right? Uh, and so here, here was the kinetic energy equals the integral of that. You integrate it, right? You're, you're going zero to d. So here's the kinetic energy you got from part c. And then you integrate it, you get this, and you solve for it. So you get the distance. So how did I know to use that? Well, firstly, they gave it to me, and the problem is this. So if you see, whoops, I see if anything with um, a force, that's probably going to be what I'm, I'm getting. You know, it could be, it could be work equals force times displacement or impulse, um, something like that. So any sort of those are useful. <clears throat> Here's another one. This is 2013, number two, and. Uh, if you look, like, basically, this subject to a drag force of magnitude... Oh, that's just... Uh, we are just yelling. That's so... A drag force is negative kV. It's drag, so I know it's negative. So basically what they're saying is that there's got to be a negative kV back this way. Right? So I think what they ask for is, write do not solve a differential equation that could be used to determine the speed. It sounds familiar. And as soon as they give you forces, you should know that F uh, sum of the forces equals MA, and that you get, you have some applied force minus KV equals MA. A little bit different, having two forces. All the practice problems I gave didn't have this, but basically don't put this, put this, dV dt. Guess what? You just did it. You just did. You just wrote the differential equation. Um, and so part C is not really important, but you should know terminal velocity means constant, right? So eventually that box, you know, as you as it gets faster and faster, so it applies a force. This force keeps increasing, unlike friction, which is always just a constant amount. This force is getting bigger as you get faster. So determine the magnitude of the terminal velocity. Well, basically you should know that at terminal velocity, acceleration equals zero. And uh, you can go ahead and solve that equation there and say, oh, FA minus KV equals zero. So FA, sorry, equals KV. V equals FA over K. So that's going to be that's going to be your, um, just because of that. So that's a little side note. Really, part D is what I care about. Use the differential equation to derive the equation for speed. So guess what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to take this equation, which I'm going to write as dm dv dt equals fa minus kv. Like, ooh, this is a weird one, right? Um, and... To relate to calculus, this is sort of when you had like a dy dx equals um, 4 minus x, 4 minus y, sorry, 4 minus y. You can write dy over 4 minus y equals dx and then integrate it, and you can still do ln of 4 minus y, right? So as a little side note, that's what you're going to basically do. This is junk all stays together, so you should get dv over that stuff because that really you can't separate that and then on the other side you should get uh, 1 over m dt right so this kind of has to stay all together because you need like you can't leave the fa Th this side has to have just a dt multiplied by something you can't add things there
take an integral of both sides. You get ln of fa minus kv equals 1 over mt plus c. Um, and uh, so let's see. Uh, at this point, you can take the... Yeah, there's different ways you can do it. I just want to, I'm going to stop there because you can go ahead and solve it. I showed the solution. That's not super important because um, you're not going to really have to do too much here. Um, but the idea is, I what makes this a little fancier is that just, you might remember, like, I'm going to put it, let's do this, put a 2 here. 2, 2. When you integrate this thing, you've got to put a 1 over a negative one half in front. So I forgot when you integrate this, you have to do a one over whatever when you did a, a u substitution here. So you should get a one over a negative k in front, right? And uh, so you have to go from there. You've got to do e to this thing and you know e to both sides. Uh, and you can go ahead and follow, but I don't want to give the important part was setting up and solving, at least starting to solve this, um, you would you would have to do this. And that's where that extra thing comes from because it's a use substitution. Again, don't think they're going to do this because of time purposes. They're certainly not going to make you solve this. Um, but it's a little hint as to how you would go about doing it. Um, you can, you know, go ahead and solve this thing and, and look at my solution. What, did I put it here? No, I didn't. Because I do want to talk th about this is more important, is the graph, right? So when something, when a lot of these ones that have the E functions, is that you're going to get, what would the um, velocity look like for this? And the velocity should start off, it starts from rest, I'm pretty sure, initially at rest, so that's an easy one right here should go like because it's reaching terminal velocity and it says label so i would say i think that's what it is f over k is that the f f a over k yeah you should reach an asymptote um okay well i guess we're going to end that all right well thanks for listening and hopefully that helped